Tournament champions. They will play number 14, Moorhead State, tomorrow at 2.10 p.m. The head coach will be following at Brad Underwood. Derek Burson is the men's basketball contact this weekend. And on the dais, we have Coleman Hawkins, Marcus Damask, and Quincy Garrier. And we're going to go right to questions for the three Illini on the dais. We're going to start here right in the middle. Thank you. Mar Marcus, I know first time in the NCAA tournament, part of the reason you wanted to come here was to play in this. What's it mean to get here, and what's it been like to be here? Yeah, uh, it's exciting. You know, obviously I came to Illinois to to play in big games in March, and we got we're here and we got a chance to win big games. So it's exciting, and and we're just focused on getting a win. Follow up, yes. Quincy, kind of a similar question. I know you want to get back to the NCAA tournament. What's led you guys to this point, and what, what's it mean to get back here? Well, it feels great. Um, like you just said, last time I came came here was uh, my sophomore year. Um, really just grateful for the opportunity, and uh, we're ready to roll for tomorrow. Coleman, I remember talking to you last year after the loss in Des Moines, and you said a lot of these guys want to come back this year to get to this point. How important was that and then to kind of see it solidified with what you, get, you guys have been able to do this year? Um, it's just been good to see our growth. Um, we've been able to put some things behind us. And, uh, you know, the guys who wanted to stay have stayed and we've grown. Uh, we've gotten better. We've gotten more mature. Uh, and I think we're, really, uh, we're ready to take on any challenge that, that comes our way. I think uh, the difference between – this year and last year is uh, we got guys that, you know, are grateful to be here and guys that really want to be here. Uh, and we're, we're only focused on winning. So uh, that's our goal to go into this tournament and, and, and uh, whoever we face every night, go out and try to win. So question right here in the aisle. Thank you. Thank you. Coleman. Hi. Uh, just want to pick up on what you just said. Um, what was it like last year, and, and how much did what you allude to about how much people wanted to be with the uh, Illini or not, you know, play into how it ended? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, th I think last year was kind of embarrassing for me. Uh, first round exit. Um, uh, it was definitely a game I felt like was winnable for us, but we just didn't compete hard. Um, felt like some of the guys gave up, but. Um, I feel like we got a really good team this year that's, you know, ready to face any any challenge, take on any challenge, and um, we're ready to compete. Um, I feel like the difference between this team and, and last year's team is um, no one's ready to go home. You know, we're ready to keep playing, um, and I'm excited to see what we do this March. Uh, yeah, uh, Coleman or any guys really. Uh, you missed Terrence for a few games in the, early in the season. You got through that. Uh, how much, how difficult was that? And uh, how do you think he's handling this? Obviously, we can't talk to him, but how is he handling this whole situation, being in the spotlight, and what he means to this uh, team? Marcus and Quincy, in that order, please. Um, yeah, uh, missing Terrence was, was tough for our team. You know, he's such a big part of what we do. But I think it kind of gave all of us a chance to, you know, do a little more. And we all got more confidence because we had to adapt our roles. And uh, as far as Terrence, you know, I think he's he's doing well. You know, he's focused on basketball. He's focused on trying to get a win. And I think that's just what we're all here. We're all just focused on trying to get a win. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like Marcus just said, uh, Terrence is really grateful to be back with us. Uh, he's been tremendous for us, and uh, he's just ready to win. Everybody's locked in. Uh, we know why we're here, and uh, we'll be ready to roll tomorrow. We're right here, and then Dawn right and back. Coleman, just following up, just what, what gives you confidence in, in this team entering this tournament? Uh, I feel like offensively we have guys who can score and create. Uh, I feel like um, we reached into a, uh, another – Another example of our defense when we started to uh, switch in that Nebraska game and we did a little bit in the Wisconsin game. And uh, I feel like 
we're able to grow in certain areas when the timing is right. Um, and I feel like we can adjust well to those changes. So um, I think it was pretty evident to, uh, you know, what happened in the Big Ten tournament. But um, I feel like there's a whole nother level that we can tap into as well. Um, I don't think I played very good in the tournament. I thought I could have been a lot better. Um, I, I feel like there was, there were spots where we could have played a lot better. And um, I think this tournament, you know, uh, gives us a chance to clean those things up and go out and compete hard. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I just feel confident in everything that we do. Uh, I trust in all the work that we've done. Uh, and like we said all year, this team is really connected. So, For any of you, uh, winning the Big Ten ch tournament is great, but you had to do it coming from behind in every game double digits. You started well. How important is it to sustain throughout the 40 minutes and not have those lulls where you have to fight back and, and hopefully win it at the end? Quincy, then Marcus, please. Uh, I mean, it just shows uh, how connected we are. Uh, you know, every game in March is going to be similar to what we've been facing uh, in the tournament. Uh, we just got to stay together, connected, and uh, we're really a mature team. Uh, everybody's old, uh, you know, and the fact that we're connected, uh, I don't think it will matter. We just have to obviously clean some stuff up, like Coleman said, uh, but we'll be ready. Yeah, um, you know, obviously we don't like to get down double digits, but I think if there's one thing about this team is just we're going to keep fighting, you know, no matter how we start, no matter what the, the middle looks like, at the end we're going to fight. Uh, so just our ability to, to come together during timeouts and, and continue to, to push through no matter what's going on, I think that's what this team has, and that's what could, could give us some wins here. This is for Quincy and, and Coleman. Um, they're kind of different questions for each, but both in regard to the fans. Quincy, you, you're Oregon, Syracuse, I'm sure engaged fan bases. I'm thinking maybe Syracuse, you know, more impatient or something like that. How are Illinois fans, you know, in, in, in your experience in a year, different? Are they are they even more amped up? Are they and, and for Coleman, um, you've had the whole gamut of experience with these fans and you know they have high expectations of you. Sometimes they from my view are, are hard on you. And I wanna know what that's like for you. Quincy uh, yeah, you know, Quincy, yeah. go ahead and start okay. that. Uh, our friends been great all year long. I mean in my experience, um, like you just said I, I went to Oregon and Syracuse, the fan base was different but here, I really feel like uh, they're supporting us a lot. Um, we have probably the best fans in the country, so uh, that's 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 my response for your answer to the question. Uh, me personally, I've uh, I feel like I've dealt with the ups and downs of being on the good side and bad side of fans, but I feel like uh, if if any fan has anything negative to say about us, I mean, can they really call themselves a fan? Um, I feel like they're more of a spectator of Illinois basketball. Uh, I feel like the real fans support us um, despite of whatever opinions they have. Um, I feel like we have a really strong fan base that really does care about us, uh, who really supports us. Um, but, um, you know, I've, I've been on both sides of, you know, whether they're, they're fans or not, I've been both on both sides of positive and negative things. And I think the biggest thing is to not let either positive or negative things go to your head because you might think too highly of yourself and then as soon as you have a bad game they turn on you but uh, I think the real fans are great the ones that support us they're uh, they're a special group for sure uh, and uh, when when they're loving and supporting there's uh, there's nobody like it in the country so I really appreciate all of them Anything else for the Fighting Illini? All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck tomorrow. Head coach Brad Underwood will be next at 12.50.
St. Louis in 26. So they come and go wherever I have a contact. As promised, the head coach of the Finding Illini, Brad Underwood, is with us for a 15-minute stint. We're going to ask him to make a statement on his team about being here in Omaha, and then we'll go to questions. Brad, please. 
Yeah, it's terrific to be here. Uh, there's nothing better than uh, the NCAA tournament. There's nothing better than hearing your name called on Selection Sunday. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here uh, with this group. Um, we've, uh, I think we're coming into this, this tournament, obviously off the Big Ten Championship, and, and uh, feel like uh, it's different than in, in, in the last few years. Um, this group is very healthy. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're playing our best basketball. Uh, I feel like we're whole. Uh, which is, um, is something that through the course of a long season, uh, there's always ups and downs and trials and tribulations and so on, um, sickness, injuries, whatever, and, and you have to deal with that. And, and so, you know, I think we're in a, in a very good place injury-wise. I think we're in a good place sickness and all that. And uh, um, we had three kind of different games in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, the first day we didn't play very well. Uh, and found a way to win, and, and I love that resilient mentality. I think you've got to have that as you move into the NCAA tournament. And, uh, you know, it, it was probably not my favorite to be down double digits three times, but uh, I think we found a way to uh, uh, persevere through, through some of those tough moments. Uh, obviously, we've got uh, uh, Terrence Shannon had a phenomenal uh, tournament and, and, and played great. Uh, Marcus Damask, uh, really after the first night, was close to triple doubles and played great. So, uh, Omaha, I've been in this venue uh, one other time in the NCAA tournament back when I was an assistant at Kansas State. It's one of the great basketball cities, great venues. Uh, so, we're, we're really, really excited to be here. And uh, we've got a great, uh, great challenge tomorrow against Moorhead State, a team that's um, uh, playing awfully well, earned the right to be here. Uh, extremely well coached and, and got a lot of respect for, uh, for their program. First question is down here on the left. Hey Brad, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Uh, you'd mentioned Terrence and, and the Big Ten tournament. Uh, I know he's had some pretty good uh, stretches during the season, but had you seen him play three straight games like that at that level? He's becoming more consistent um, as a player. I think the one thing that's that's uh, to answer your question, no, I, not at that, not at 40 points, 34. I mean, he's had some individually big games, uh, but it was called upon for him to, to do that. Uh, he's becoming very consistent. As he's been with us a second year. Uh, the NBA process was great for him. Uh, he listened, and he went to work uh, on, on things that were, uh, they thought were issues with his game. So he's gotten better. Uh, but uh, he is, uh, uh, you know, he's doing what great players do at, in big moments, and that's and that's rise to the occasion. So uh, that was that was special watching that. And the forty point game was very organic. We don't run a ton for him. Uh, you know, I just looked at the box score at the end of the game, and it's like, oh wow, you know, he's he's got a, he had a night, and uh, he did it in all different facets of of. Of the of play with the threes, with uh, transition, getting to the foul line, um, very efficient. Coach, uh, sincere Harris played every game last year. Comes into this year red shirting. Just what have you seen out of him, and just how he's approached and handled his new role this year? He's a big reason we're as prepared as we are. He's in. He's he's with the scout team. Uh, nobody talks more trash. Nobody's more competitive. Nobody fights more in practice. He guards Terrence a lot uh, in practice. But uh, his work ethic, uh, very unselfish on his part to want to, to red shirt. That was, that was him wanting to do that. Uh, get bigger, get stronger. Uh, he's lived with our strength coach. Uh, he's been in the gym uh, every single day for workouts, uh, working on his jump shot. Uh, so we see a much improved player, but we also see one that uh, helps make the guys that are playing better every day. Three questions are up. Go, please. Coach, you've had a lot of success at Illinois. You've got a couple of Big Ten championships, a lot of wins, but the NCAA tournament has been tough, and rightfully so. There's a lot of good teams here. How does this team sustain a run this year, knowing history and last year's first-round loss? They don't know history. They don't know. That's, that's, that's only because you guys talk about it. 
Um, this is a new group, uh, veteran group. Um, you know, it, it's it's um, uh, one game at a time. It's every day at a time. We have the saying, everyday guys. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, every great program, uh, there's been a ton of them that have ups and downs in the tournament. Uh, one of the reasons I like this group is we're healthy. Um, and, and that's a big thing going into you know, the NCAA tournament and postseason play to sustain any type of run. But it's one game at a time. Uh, I think you've, you have to understand the abruptness of the end. Uh, I think this group's old. I think they, they, they truly understand that. Hey, Coach, uh, that part of the season early on when you didn't have Terrence, uh, players kind of learned how to win without him, and then he came back obviously better, a better team. Do you think if he hadn't come back, would this he'd still be in this position, or was he just that important to the overall team? No, I think I think it it helped us in a certain sense, but uh, um, we found our we were we were finding our identity uh, right about then on the especially on the offensive side, and and uh, uh, yet we continued to flourish. Uh, you know, I think we we went into a shock a little bit uh, our first road game at Purdue without him. Um, you know, there's there was a sense of swagger that that uh, that he gave us. We didn't, you know, we were down 20 to four, I think. Uh, but um, but from that point on, I think we got better, and and uh, and then it's been, um, you know, since he was he's been back, it was just reinstating and 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 him kind of fitting in. He knew that we were playing well, and uh, uh, so it's made us better along the way. Hey, Brad. Uh, I was thinking of that Chattanooga game a couple of years ago, and, and how it was a one-point game. Obviously, you remember, but, but how 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 difficult it could be at times for that team to score, and then this team, like the the blitzes in Minneapolis, it's just so different. Um, how much of that, if any of it, was you feeling like you know, we've got to we've got to be able to go on runs and 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 just score and score to do better. You know, at the end of the season, was, was that a conscious thing yes. that you wanted to turn that up? And, and I'll, I'll, I don't want to make too much out of it with with that team. You know, Trent had pink eye, and we were without Jacob Grandison with a shoulder injury. Uh, two of those guys; those were two big guys that helped initiate offense. But um, yeah, I, I think the, the the ability to adjust has always been, as you move into postseason play, has always been something that was a challenge for us and um, as great as Kofi was there were there were some of those limitations in terms of what we could do at both ends of the court and he was dominant but uh, being able to have have versatility um, multiple guys do multiple things uh, score the basketball from a lot of different ways um, I think we proved that this weekend we could do that so we'll see I, I you know it, it seemed to Seem to be pretty good for a lot of teams in, in postseason play. Um, you, two, two, three years ago, or whatever it was, the I.O. Kofi team, that was a one seed. You know, you just look at the, the regular season or the seeding and you'd think that that was your best Illinois team. Um, but the way this team can erupt, is this team better equipped for, for the tournament even? You know, or is this sort of the maybe your your team with the best shot? Do you feel like going in? We're getting ready to find out. I like this team. I like this team. I, I do, and I for a lot of different reasons other than that. I I, I just think we're a um, there's there's a lot of uh, versatility with this group. Our bench is productive. We don't win the Big Ten term without Dane. Um, you know, I thought we were. Um, you know, Luke Goody's healthy now. I I, I just think we have a lot of. Uh, uh, Ability to do different things, which we didn't then. Now that team was great. He's got two All Americans there. Uh, just chose to have a bad day and had a bad day. But again, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I like where this group's going, though. Thank you. Anything else for the head coach? All right. Thank you very much, Brad, and good luck. Thank you. Body line on.